Welcome to Superior Profit Weekly Market Roundup, 2nd September 2017. I am Sagan Nandi, Chief Analyst and Trader at Superior Profit, a company based in Singapore. I will not take time to introduce myself. If you are interested to know more about me, the company Superior Profit, or more importantly, how it can help you in your trading, you may visit the website www.superiorprofit.co and click on the about men. Before we begin, we go through the standard disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on superior profits trading system. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. Superior profit is not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. Superior profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. As usual, in today's topics, we will look at oil gold india's nifty futures and few forex pairs for nifty futures and forex pairs we use meta stock i hope it will start running if not we may skip those we'll also look at usa broad market etfs using q technical charts before going into broad market internal analysis sector and industry analysis using graphs and ranking table Along the way, we may look at some of the community posts and also look for potential trades for the coming week. Q&A is throughout the session. You may ask questions as we go along and I will try to answer them. That was the last slide of the presentation. Let's move to live system. We start with US oil. We are looking at USO using weekly backdrop chart on the left hand side, daily hop on chart on the right hand side. Some time ago on this candle, I suggested that it was already too late to enter any long trade. That was a good decision. After that, US oil fell down. It came very close to the watermark level and then went up from there. It is overall in downtrend having lower highs and lower lows. So we don't have any trade set up right now in USI. We'll have to wait for the next signal to come. Again, we are looking at gold using weekly backdrop chart on the left hand side, daily hop on chart on the right hand side. Last week on Friday, gold ended with a very bullish shape candle. However, the candle color was not cyan, so we didn't have any go with flow long entry. And this week, it went up sharply, tried to go down one day, However, that candle color was still bullish. Traffic light color was green. And after that, it again went up. It closed the week at the very high of the week's price range. So gold is strongly bullish. However, it is already above upper boundary. So if somebody is not already in a gold trade, it is a bit late to enter gold right now meaning the risk is too high relative to the potential reward. That doesn't say that gold cannot go higher. It only says that the reasonable stop loss right now is to be placed below recent low, which is at this price. That is quite a distance away from the closing price. In superior profit way, we like to always manage risk. So we will stay away from entering a trade in GLD right now. Now let's look at Nifty and I will try to run Metastock one more time. 
by the way this thursday i conducted a webinar along with metastock on aligning edges in favor of our trade from the different levels of the market starting with broad market then sector and industry and then at stock level both for fundamentals and technicals right now the market is bullish we will look at that again using broad market internal analysis if we have an industry that is going up and find a stock that is fundamentally strong and is also giving us a technical buy point on q charts that will be aligning all the forces in favor of our trade as of that webinar day i found a stock that meets many of these conditions i posted it in the community we may have a look at that okay meta stock is not working so let's keep looking at nifty and the forex pairs let's move to the broad market etfs that is spy qqq dia and iw last week we had discussed for spy price was close to the yellow direction line and there was no valid q trade setup on tuesday price opened with a gap down and recovered sharply and for the next 3 days price continued to go up on friday price closed with a traffic light green candle that is bullish but the shape of the candle is not so bullish price is near the watermark high level that is the all time high for spy and it is also just below the second watermark level price tried to go above the second watermark but closed down and if we look to the left side we see that on this candle though it made an all time high this candle also closed below the same watermark level around 248 so you may keep an eye on spy and see if next week price again goes down from this 248 or so level there is no valid q trade setup at the right edge however if price starts to go down next week one may initiate a trade using q fine tune real time chart as a day trade book some profit probably if it closes near the low of the day one may hold on to partial position as a two day trade or swing trade we see that spy is near resistance and we will see the same thing in the other etfs as well let's look at qqq for last few weeks qqq was underperforming it was going down with lower highs and lower lows on tuesday it did open with a gap down just like spy recovered sharply and then went up it actually made a new all time high it seems that qqq also closed just at or slightly below this watermark resistance level which is also present in the weekly chart last time price tried to go there displayed a bearish headwind in weekly and came down for several weeks that down move stopped right at the memory support line if we look at the activities in the weekly chart we see the extreme or very high activities in recent period all of them are bearish and same is true for daily chart also probably only these two days up days had very high activity but many more days had 
extreme or very high activities with down days. So though price is holding quite well and even making new all time high for PPQ, when we look at activity, we see actually more selling is going on. If it was truly bullish, then we'll have many more heavy activity updates, which is not the case for QQQ. If QQQ tilts down from watermark resistance next week, it may give us a potential short day trade. And if we can book partial profit and price closes near the day's low, one may hold partial position as a two day trade or even a swing trade. Sometimes people call this heavy activity up days as accumulation, heavy activity down days as distribution. In Q charts, we can identify them simply by looking at the dots and the same thing we can see from the weekly chart. So as David mentioned, we can say now we have more distribution weeks or distribution days than up days. And you know, in some of our trade setups like box setup, which uses this stretch release signal, which is a very fast trade setup, reversal setup, and also bounce trade setup, which is also a very fast trade setup, which uses the memory support resistance line. We have an ambiguous condition checklist that uses the very hard extreme high activity condition. Both are reversal trades and we would like to take these reversal trades only if they are accompanied by heavy activity. We saw QQQ, SPY, both went up, but both are at resistance levels. And that is true for DIA as well. Let's look at DIA. Now, a few weeks ago, DIA was the strongest. However, that is not true in the recent time. It couldn't go near the all time high. It actually tried to go above the memory resistance, but stopped just at or slightly maybe below that. Again, near a round number 220. In the weekly chart also, we see that it couldn't go to the watermark resistance. It didn't make a new all time high. If price comes down from the memory resistance level in daily, we may again look for a short trade. However, if you look at these three ETFs, SPY, QQQ, DIA, it seems sometimes traders are pushing QQQ up. After a few weeks, they are pushing DIA up and rotating between the ETFs. If that continues, then Probably next week or so, QQQ will move faster. So if you are looking for day trade, you may keep an eye on the ETFs using fine tune chart. And if QQQ is dropping, may be more happy to take a short trade in that. Let's look at the last of the USA broad market ETFs, IWM. Now here we see the ETF went up sharply after the bullish headwind signal came about two weeks ago. That is how bullish headwind signals appear on hindsight. That if we could have taken a trade at this point, we would have made a very high profit. And once we keep on watching this signal in action, we will have more confidence to use the signal. Probably in the beginning, people who are new to Q system are not sure how it works. But as we review them more and more through many charts, on your own, you can do that. And I do that in this weekly market roundups. You will start to gain confidence on how to use the signal. And instead of just looking at hindsight, you will be able to take a long trade on this bullish headwind signal 
which was accompanied by exhaustion, price came to a support level, that is the wide direction line, and it had a very bullish shape candle. One factor that helps us take the decision to take long on this day is that our entry price will be not very far from stop loss. So the risk could be very narrow. That is our aim in all our trades. We have seen if we can manage risk, then eventually we will surely make profit. This is the only ETF which went up strongly for two weeks. You remember it was the worst performer for many weeks. So this again supports the conclusion that it seems the bigger players are just rotating money from one ETF to another ETF, giving the impression that price is not moving, which is true in the longer time frame. It's hardly moving anywhere. But again, the activities give people away. We see that down days are more strong than up days. So though price is not moving anywhere over a longer period, it seems that the bigger players are selling stocks more than they are buying. So it's again another reason to be careful and not to buy stocks which are already at pendulum high. Now I mentioned that QQQ is now the best performer it made all time high. So if this theory continues in action, then next week it may be better to take short trade in QQQ. That is a if, and we can track that using Q fine tune chart. If we look at the ETFs side by side during market hours, then what we are looking for is which of the ETFs fall below early range low first. Here we can see all the three ETFs, DIA, QQQ, and SPY using 10 minute interval using fine tune template. So we are able to see Friday's data. And if you see Friday's data after market open, the early range high and low were formed for all the three ETFs. And we see QQQ was actually the weakest on Friday. It broke below early range low and could never go back above that. Daya actually never went below early range low. And SPY went below early range low just for a few minutes. And then for the rest of the day remained range bound and above early range low. So if we observe this pattern, we can see that even on Friday, QQQ was actually the weakest. We can see that from the percentage change also, it declined on Friday, whereas Dow Jones Industrial Average ETF and SPY both increased. Now, if you are using this for day trading, then how we want to use it is not just look at the percentage, but rather rely on the real time pivot levels. If QQQ is going below early range low, then that will be the right time to take the short trade. Friday, there was probably no sign on the daily chart. So we will not really be taking any short trade in QQQ or DISPY on Friday. But now looking at the resistance levels in multiple ETFs from where price came down in the past, we may look for a day trade short opportunity in one of the ETFs. And for whichever ETF, it goes below early range low first, we may target that ETF for a day trade short opportunity. I mentioned earlier, sometimes traders push price higher at the open. And then if it starts going down, then the short opportunity may be more lucrative. 
in other words it may end up being a gap short day trade opportunity in fact if we look at friday's chart we see friday's price for qqq opened here the blue line which was higher than thursday's high the green line so it did open with a small gap up if similar opportunities appear in one of the etfs on monday or tuesday then you may look for potential reversal over daily time frame but initiate the trade as a early range breakout trade and if it happens to be gap short day trade it is potentially more lucrative let me try one more time to run metastock while i do that let me come back to the recent webinar that i conducted on aligning multiple levels forces with our trade i did find one potential opportunity abc posted it in the community if i have time i will go through that if not you may look it up in our traders community today also i think i can locate some trades where forces from all the levels are aligned those are the highest probability trades that anyone can take where market industry fundamental as well as technicals are aligned if you are trading for a while you will know that the true secret of success is to manage the risk and increase your probability of success there is no certainty in a particular trades outcome if we can keep on aligning more probability in our trades favor and keep risk small always take small risk one percent or two percent of the account size maybe for stocks then you will do quite well in the long run actually if you do that it is difficult not to make money if you do that in a disciplined way okay meta stock is not running fine then let us continue with broad market sector industry analysis using graphs and ranking table every week we analyze broad market internals by looking at nasdaq composite index weekly chart on the left hand side nyse composite index weekly chart on the right hand side as this analysis is using weekly chart for broad market composite indices this is to be used only for long term investment decisions not for swing trading and certainly not for day trading this week nasdaq composite went up sharply and qqq made a new all time high however nasdaq composite couldn't make that new all time high and we can clearly see that though nyse also went up it didn't go up as forcefully as nasdaq did over longer period of course they both continue to be in uptrend if we look at the internals they continue to be weak not able to surpass previous peaks however this week the new high lows for both nasdaq and nyse did go over the previous peaks in fact all the six internals went up and all of them closed positive so in summary we can say that broad market continues to be in uptrend the internals continue to be weak and for this specific weeks internals are clearly strong at the same time when we combine this perspective with the broad market etfs we have to say that because the broad market etfs are at resistance level it is no time to start buying stocks let's look at the sectors every week we look at 11 broad sectors over three review periods the red bar represents performance of this week yellow bar performance of the week before red bar 
and blue bar performance of two weeks before the yellow bar. Together, they constitute four weeks or about one month of performance. In this week, we see eight of the 11 sectors gained, showing strength in the market, and seven of the sectors gained for two successive weeks. So that is clearly showing strength in the market, at least looking back. Last week, in this roundup, I had mentioned that utilities were strong, but some of the utilities were already at pendulum high and even showing sign of weakness. And I mentioned that it is not time to look for long stocks in utilities. We might even start to look for shorts. That analysis was very timely. I could do that based on not only this graph analysis, but the Q-Edge industry analysis, where I saw some of the utilities were starting to show weakness. It could be the beginning of a drop from the peak. That analysis worked very well because utilities declined now for this week. And the other industry that declined is telecom. Telecom reverse from gain to loss. These are two of the biggest decliners, utilities and telecom, and both are in defensive sectors. If we look at energy, we see that now energy sector went up for two successive review periods. This may be contrary to what different media are messaging, that energy is going to continue to drop. We just trust what we see, and we see that though energy was lagging for a long time, for two successive review periods, five days and 10 days, energy as a sector is already up. You may keep an eye on energy industries to see if there is any bottom catching opportunity there. Okay, let's look at industries now. This analysis using age, industry analyst, age sector analyst, and the graphs is extremely useful, at least for me. Let's look at best performing industries over last five days. As gold went up, we saw it from GLD, the commodities ETF chart, several gold miners went up. Now when stocks go up, every stock doesn't give us a low risk entry opportunity. That is fine. We don't have to catch every stock that is going up. We need to catch only few of those where we have a low risk opportunity. And there are plenty of them. If you watch one of the videos in our YouTube channel, you will see we don't need to take too many trades. Even taking two trades on average in a week, that is for swing trading, between 30 to 40% annual return can be achieved, assuming only six trades are profitable out of 10 trades. So we don't have to work too hard trying to take swing trades every day. Few trades are enough and it is okay to let those stocks go where we don't have a low risk opportunity. So Gigi had one or maybe two go with flow low risk entry opportunities. Let us look at that chart using at a glance template. This is Gigi looking at the stock using backdrop chart, weekly interval, left hand side, and hop on chart on the right hand side using daily interval. We see that price came to the watermark level and went up from there. Then it made a higher high and higher low. So by the time price came to the sand candle, or this sand candle, both of which we could identify using Q sonar, either the Metastock version or the trade station version, then we had very low risk entry opportunities. Both of these days met all the conditions of go with flow long trade. I can see that from the daily chart because the candle colors were cyan 
and weekly chart i see that already for four weeks the backdrop color is cyan so when price came here i can anticipate that weekly was cyan at that time so that made all the conditions for go with flow long trade in both daily and weekly chart and if we could run sonar on that day and identify them we could take these low risk trades without second guessing that is what we need to do as regular trader we have to be patient but when the signals come we don't second guess as the industry was also strengthening in key wage we would therefore have all the market forces in favor of these trades that is the broad market which was bullish overall the industry for gold miners was strong during this period gold was also strong and these stocks technicals gave us valid go with flow long trade so at least three of the four market forces were strong not sure if the fundamental was strong or not even if fundamental is not strong we can still take a swing long trade maybe not long term investment and if it gives profit as it did in this case hitting upper boundary on tuesday at least partial profit could be booked and gold is very strong the industry is strong weekly chart is strong so in this case we would not like to exit full position partial position can still be held with trailing stop using q protection signal so if we change to the hop off template then we see that when we took the long trade in one of these two candles our initial stop loss was at this level indicated by q protection signal we booked partial profit on this candle and then we could hold on to the remaining position with initial stop loss or we could move to the trailing stop loss in last few classes i indicated that if we are exiting to third position then it is okay to hold on to the one third position with initial stop loss because even if price comes to the initial stop loss we will still have some profit but if we close only half position then we need to move stop to either break even that is this price level or the trailing stop loss to make sure that if the new stop is hit we still have some profit in our hand now if we had used the initial stop loss for remaining position after booking partial profit then we will wait for price to come down and then go back up creating a new swing low and once that new swing low forms from then onward we are to use the trailing stop so as of today for the remaining position our stop loss will be at this level and if gg continues to go up our trailing stop will continue to go up so you can see how using q protection signal we could take a trade with very narrow stop and then move it at the appropriate time as a trailing stop to protect our profit this signal works quite well to let profit run on the remaining position let's go back to the industry analysis so we could take a very low risk entry in gg one of the gold miners let's look at biotech it went up heavily this week more than 7.6% now you remember in the past market roundups when biotech was all magenta color in q wage and then just about to show sign of strength that is the q wage ranking was changing to cyan that time quite a few weeks ago we looked at the fundamentally strongest stocks using q vital and we had identified gilead gild at that time as one of the fundamentally strongest stocks 
Now, if you look at Xylate, you will see that it has gone up considerably. So this was again another time where using Q edge, we could catch the very low of the industry when it was starting to go up from all magenta for many months starting to go up. And using Q vital, we could find one of the most strong stocks and take a long term investment position, not only swing trade, it could be swing trade, but these are the trades where we love to take long term investment positions. Let us look at Q vital to see again how easily we could identify its strength and it continues to be a very strong stock. And then we will look at Q charts to see how nicely it has gone up since we started talking about it long time ago. If we look at media, etc., maybe people are now noticing that Jailid has gone up. In fact, when we identified Jailid, I was talking to one of my trading friends in America. He was telling that Jailid would probably go up after two years' time, but the chart was telling us otherwise. Both chart and key wage was telling that industry and that stock was about to go up, and we could trust our eyes more. The point is that overriding what we see by our bias is not helpful. So let's have a review of that again. So we look at Q vital first. We enter the root stock, click on retrieve peers button. Oh, it's saying not signed in. Wait a moment, let me try to run icon and see if his icon is running. Okay, we couldn't successfully open icon. So let me continue with the trade station only. Coming back to Jaili, if you open Jaili in QA, you will see it is still a very strong stock fundamentally. And if we look at Jaili through Q charts, then you will see that it went up strongly from the bottom. And probably somewhere here we started identifying the industry as one that was weak but starting to gain strength. It has gone up strongly in between one earnings came after that price dropped a little bit came right to the value area where three of the direction lines came together white magenta cyan the yellow was little bit below and again price went up sharply from there. Interestingly, every time the bearish headwinds came, price couldn't go up, it fell down at least to the value area. However, for a long term investor, one may just hold it across the swings, not exit position based on bearish headwind signal, whereas for swing trading, one will book profit at the upper boundaries and then if bearish headwind comes may exit the full position looking for another low risk entry point. So if we look from the right edge inside then we see this was a cyan candle that gave us a go with flow long opportunity low risk entry opportunity and that could be the last entry that we could take for swing trading. At the right edge, of course, it is overbought, shown by the stretch dots coming on top of the candles. So we are not going to take any long trade in Jailid right now. But we are active traders. We are using Q edge and Q charts. By doing that, we could catch Jailid right at the point it was starting to go up. Now, if we look back, then when it broke out of that range, probably we will not use that opportunity to take a long because in superior profit way, we are usually not breakout traders. So though this candle went up, accompanied by heavy activity broke out of the watermark level, we were not going to take a breakout long trade. So looking back when the industry was starting to gain strength, our first entry opportunity would be this go with flow long opportunity on this sand candle. And that would also be quite profitable. This was the first swing low that we could catch that gave us a trade after 
higher high and higher low was formed let's go back to the industry analysis so jailit shows the use of q edge industry analyst and vital fundamental analyst for swing trading and also for catching the very low of stocks now what played out for biotech in the past may be playing out for construction materials now it is the best performer this week going up by about 8.5 percentage construction materials gained after underperforming for several months you can open it on qh and you see that on a monthly basis for many months it was underperforming the rank was showing in magenta color and now it is turning cyan so if so we have a possibility of taking swing long as well as long term investment if we look at mlm and exp then we will see that they had profitable box long trades this week let's look at them restriction is working so we can look at the charts mlm and exp mlm chart we are looking at construction materials company mlm using weekly backdrop template on the left hand side daily hop on template on the right hand side we see that there was a bullish headwind signal few days ago few weeks ago actually however we will not take any long trade at that time because looking at the weekly chart we can see the weekly backdrop candle color was magenta so it was not meeting all the checklist conditions for headwind reversal long trade however this week again the bullish headwind signal came and price also went back above the watermark support level so it was a false downside breakout accompanied by very high activity we had a bull release signal we had an additional signal in favor of the long trade that was the bullish headwind signal and we see price could never close below the watermark that was created by the first bullish headwind signal and if we were running sonar on this day this yellow candle we will find it using box long sonar we could check up the industry and see that the industry was gaining strength market was already bullish so we could align at least three of the forces with our trade stop will be just below recent low because it is a fast trade we will book profit as soon as price comes to some resistance level or the risk distance is covered so when price hit this white direction line it hit yellow direction line on the same day at least partial profit will be taken and now we may be keeping a trailing stop to let profit run on the remaining position and if it stopped out we will still guarantee that there is reasonable profit this was mlm and the other stock also gave us very nice profit that was exp exp is again in construction materials the industry that is gaining strength after a long time and here also we see that price tried to go below the watermark support level came back up on this candle we had a bull release signal accompanied by heavy activity the candle shape was very bullish so it met all the conditions of a box long trade so this was another construction materials company where we could take a box long put stop just below recent low and now more than the risk distance is covered so we could book some profit at the upper boundary level and use trailing stop or if you are closing to third of position you may leave one third with initial stop until price makes a new swing low and once price makes a new swing low you can start using trailing stop so these two were profitable trades we could take looking at qh industry analyst and 
drilling down. Why I looked at these two specifically is that both of them are fundamentally strong, very high growth. The two companies I found in this industry with best growth and it took only one minute. If we open QEdge, drill down from construction materials, we will get a list of stocks. Just drop those stocks in QVital, run the Vital statistics and just a glance on the scorecard would show that these are the only two companies from the drill down list with best fundamentals. When we took the long trades, box long trades for these two stocks, it aligned actually all the forces from all the levels. That is broad market, which was bullish, industry was strong. Technically, there was a valid trade setup in each of them and fundamentally both were strong. These are the kinds of trades that we like to take. Just like GILD was in the past, we found these two stocks in the present. And for future also, I already mentioned ABC looks like an appealing stock. Maybe not all the forces are aligned, but many of the forces are aligned. There will be other stocks also, if we follow this approach. We can wait patiently for them. Now, if we look at the industries that went up, we can see there is some similarity between some of them. So construction materials here and construction engineering are similar. Forest wood products, paper and forest products similar and biotechnology. So if we find stocks in these industries that are going up, we'll be happier to take them. You may keep an eye on construction materials. It's just a hypothesis. I don't trade and I don't suggest trading based on hypothesis, but because of the huge flood in America and possibility of building a wall and the GDP growth and the economic growth, construction materials may go up. That's just a hypothesis. We don't trade based on that. We will trade based on what we see in QH, QVital, and Q charts. Before looking at worst performers, look at the percentage gain of the best performers. The best performing industries went up by quite high percentages, ranging from 5, 4.92 is almost like 5 to 8.5. If we look at the worst performers, we'll see that the percentages are much smaller. So we can see other than these two, computer and electronics retailers and specialized consumer services, they had very large drops, about 10% or more. But other than that, the other industries went down by much smaller percentages. They again seem to show that the overall market is more bullish than bearish. However, when we keep an eye on the broad market ETFs, we see they are at very high level and near resistance. And in the past, price couldn't close above those resistances, even QQQ, which made a new all-time high, even that closed below that resistance level. It will be a time to be careful not to buy stocks, especially stocks that are at pendulum high. Now, if we look at the five days was performing industries, we see some similarity, consumer electronics retailers and consumer electronics. There is some similarity between them, packaged Food and meals and food products has some similarity. Personal services and specialized consumer services has some similarity. There are always opportunities in the market if we patiently wait for them. So when I looked at personal services through QH, you may look it up. My QH is not working right now. You will see this industry was strong for a long time and just now starting to weaken. And this stock, Weight Watchers, is very well known stock. They have very stable revenue also, but the growth is very poor. If you look it up on QVital, just takes a glance to show that their growth is very poor now. And if we look at Q charts on trade station, we'll see there is a very low risk go with flow short signal. Let's have a look at the chart. We see that Weight Watchers went up strongly. So if we were keeping an eye on the stock using QEdge and 
Q charts, probably we could catch it not before the earnings. I see some other presenters show us this candle and say, I will buy on this candle and make a lot of profit catching the very bottom. That is on hindsight. In real life, if we try to buy a stock just before earnings week, that will be gambling. So I never misrepresent like that. So I will not say that we are going to buy the stock just before breakout and make a ton of money. However, probably there will be a sign in daily chart corresponding to one of the weeks here where we would have a go with flow long trade opportunity. I can try to look for that. It was earnings in which month? March. So if I go to daily chart, so coming back again, we never say that we are going to buy the stock just before earnings, just before the earnings, though it broke out of the range with heavy activity because it was just before earnings. So what we do in superior profit way, we wait patiently for the price to come down, for sign signal to come in, which came after the first higher high, higher low. So this was truly the first go with the long trade opportunity. First trend following long trade opportunity we could take after this long period of sideways move. And that would be a very profitable trend. Risk will be up to this point from this entry price. Initial profit target will be at the upper boundary. So we could book partial profit there and then hold on to the remaining position. And you can see clearly it went up strongly. So we will have very high profit on the remaining position. Now at the right of the chart, it is tilting down. It is now doing the reverse. In the weekly chart, I see for three weeks it went down. And the current week, backdrop candle color has turned magenta. In daily chart, we already have lower high. You can say starting to show lower low at the right edge. On Friday, it closed below both the direction lines, cyan and magenta. So on Friday, we have already a go with flow short signal. Stop loss is very nearby. So this is a very low risk entry. If price comes to the lower boundary, we can book partial profit. And if it continues to go downward, we'll have a trade where we could catch the very top. Just like we could catch the very bottom if we were watching it when it was coming out of the narrow range at the bottom. So this was one short trade that I found starting with the industry edge analysis and drilling down. When we look at the industries with biggest rank improvements, we see there are several industries related to house furnishing, so home furnishing, household goods, appliances, tools, housewares, housewares specialties, household appliances, household durables. Several of these were weak for a while. If you open them on keyway, you will see they were weak for a while, but one, two, three, four, five, six of them gained rank considerably. So you may look for potential long trades. We keep on seeing that if an industry is biggest rank improver in subsequent weeks, often it ends up being one of the best performers. So if you can start to look for long opportunities based on best rank improvement, you have a chance of catching them at a lower price. If we look at the industries with biggest rank declines, we see many of them are now related to apparel and retail. Many retailers declined again in rank. This industry is really struggling to get back to its feet. It was trying to go up, fell down again, and this week again. One, two, three, four, five in retail industry fell down. Corporate financial services is one that was very strong for a long time. Again, you can look it up in keywords and you may look for potential short. I already drilled down 
And when I did that, I saw these two stocks, AER and SBAC. I looked them up in QVital and I saw AER is actually pretty strong, whereas SBAC is very weak. So I wanted to show you both of these stocks in QVital and QCharts, compare them and contrast them, but I'm not able to run QVitals. AER is fundamentally stronger, though the industry is showing weakness, biggest strength decliner. Top price is at, I think, near all time high. However, it tried to go above the watermark resistance level and drop from there with a very bearish shape candle. So if next week it goes down, it may give us very low risk short trade opportunity. It may not be a standard setup because for a box short trade setup, we need the weekly to be yellow. That may not happen Monday or Tuesday. So we'll not have all the conditions met for standard box trade setup. Now, anyway, we were not preferring to enter a short in AER because it is fundamentally strong. If we look at the other company, SBSC, its fundamental is clearly weaker, very weak compared to AER, one of the weakest in the peer comparison. And here in the daily chart, we see that after the gap up, it tried to go up but failed. And on Friday, it dropped heavily. With Thursday's up move accompanied by extreme high activity, then Friday it fell. So when we look at both of them together, we have to conclude that it was probably the sellers more active than buyers. We'll have to keep an eye. If it continues to fall, it will give us a short opportunity where the industry is starting to weaken. Its fundamental is weak and technically it looks weak. So you may keep an eye on that, especially if the industry continues to weaken, this may give us a short opportunity in a stock that is also fundamentally weak. That was a look at the broad market sector industry. Usually I spend some time on QH, but my QH is not running. So let's skip that. Okay, very good find, very good find. We need just a few seconds to look at the chart. And in my book, very good find means low risk. This company dropped a lot, Nordic American tanker, NAT. In the weekly chart, we have a bullish headwind signal. In the daily chart, we can see earnings here. After earnings, it moved sideways for a few days. On Thursday and Friday, it didn't have very or extreme high activity. There is no dot, but much higher than at least recent few days. And it closed up with bullish shape candles. And if we look at Friday's candle, we can say that now we have a higher high and equal low. So if somebody takes a long trade here, probably stop is a little bit far for my liking. But if I look at weekly and daily chart, this is a stock where we have a potential to catch the very bottom. You may look up its fundamentals. If fundamentals is good, may not be in terms of growth, but if the valuation is optimal in QVital, and if the industry is starting to go up, then we'll have a very good opportunity to catch the very bottom. This is in water transportation, you may keep an eye. Okay, this is also a very good looking stock. This is not showing a standard Q trade setup, but once you are used to the Q systems, you will be able to identify when it is a low risk trade and you have more probabilities of it going in your favor. Here we see that after earnings, it went up sharply then it declined. So we are not breakout traders anyway. So we'll not be taking any long position when it broke out after earnings. We'll wait patiently. 
and if we do that we see friday is the first candle that became cyan after earnings if we look at the daily chart all the conditions of go with flow long trade trend following long trade are being met in addition we have price bouncing up from multiple memory support lines and in addition we have a condition where price closed strongly up and above all the four direction lines this doesn't happen often and it is not a required condition required condition is to have price close at least above cyan magenta line but in this case price closed above all the four direction lines in the book also that is on our website i mentioned that is aligning more forces in favor of our long trend so daily chart is giving all the long signals weekly chart is still yellow that's why i said if we apply the standard checklist it is still not qualifying for a go withdraw long trade because weekly is neutral but if you are watching the chart for a while and see that it is bouncy come from there it is a valid long there are multiple ways to actually enter the trade i have distinction between identifying a trade and entering a trade identifying the trade here can be done using q sonar that will be bottom up or as david is saying he identified it from q edge so maybe from top down approach both are fine what about entry my preference is entering just before market close on friday and i will state the reason also i always try to execute my trades in a time efficient manner if i enter the trade just before market close for usa market between 3:50 pm to 4 pm eastern standard time that 10 minutes that's the only time that i need to be there in front of computer if i use the signal from friday and decide to enter the trade on monday then my preference is i look at the fine tune chart wait until it goes above the early range high that may happen very quickly that may not happen very quickly that means i don't know on monday how long i will have to sit down in front of computer because i am trying to execute my trade in a time efficient manner i prefer to enter it just before market close i know that 10 minutes is only time that i need there is another thing if you see our philosophy we are aligning many 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 forces in favor of the trade market force industry force fundamentals of the stock i don't know technically it is strong so if we are aligning more and more forces the probability that it will open higher on monday is higher it's not guaranteed we never know where next open will be it can be higher it can be lower but because we have more and more forces in our favor in our way i have seen over larger number of trades it tends to open higher more for long trades and lower more for short trades that's another reason i prefer to enter my trades just before market close i will look at one last talk that i shared in traders community that was identified based on this thursday's class the company is abc how i found it is using qvital i mentioned about it in the last class what we can do in qvital is drop a large list of stocks and in this case i dropped a list of 500 stocks from s&p 500 we can enter up to 500 stocks in qvital right now and let it calculate the vital statistics it takes a while a lot of calculation is to be done a lot of comparison is to be done so it took about 4 minute or so for my computer and when i looked at the vital score card what i did i went to earnings quality and i filtered by color excel as a facility filter by color filter by color blue so i found all the stocks that has quality earnings means they are not trying to juggle with the earnings doesn't mean it's always going to be strong it means that their accounting practices are solid then i filtered by color on relative value again on blue that gave me a list of stocks 
that has good earnings as well as relative to its industry peers, good valuation. And then I filtered by color again on internal value score blue that gave me the stocks from S&P 500, which has good earnings reliability, optimal valuation relative to peers and good internal valuation that is calculated based on dividend and earnings projection, etc. And then immediately ABC caught my eye because it also had good growth. Now remember, these companies are from S&P 500. So they are not all in the same industry. So we have to take the growth comparison with a pinch of salt. We should ideally compare it only with stocks belonging to same industry. But still, from a glance, I could see that in S&P 500, this is one of the best growth also. We can just look at the color. You can look at the number, but not required. Another thing to keep in mind that the bigger this list is, as was in this case, 500 stocks, the more useful this green color is. If we are talking about only two stocks, then one will surely be green, other will be red. So for the green, yellow, red parameters, that is from EVB downwards, we prefer to have more stocks. So ABC met many criteria favorable to the stock good earnings quality, good relative valuation, good internal valuation, high growth. Next, I look at the chart and it looked interesting immediately. No? The weekly is not signed yet. That's expected because there is a drop. But we see that after earnings, it had a big drop. Then it couldn't go below anymore. Instead, it had a false downside breakout on Friday it closed with a very bullish candle and candle color turned cyan. So we have a box long trade setup. Now drug retailers over five days, it is still magenta. However, over two day and one day period, it improved. If on Monday, you see that it is continuing to go up, it will again give us a trade where all the four levels are aligned to our trade. And these are the kinds of trades I prefer to take, which was true for Jailid at one point in time, which is true for some of the construction material companies now, and which is true apparently for ABC. On the short side, we saw that Weight Watchers could be one that has the reverse scenario, where the fundamentals is weak, industry is weakening, chart is also showing weakness. That was a great use of QVital. The more you use QVital QA, you will be able to identify many trades. Probably we don't need so many trades. Chasing too many trades also not useful. That is all that I wanted to share in today's class. Thank you for joining. I look forward to seeing you in our next class. Have a great weekend and trade profitably.